All right, so we left off with this bay window component, but before we move on to the cornice detail, um, we're going to freeze out some of this geometry um, so that when we augment this stuff later, um, it's just going to make life a lot easier. And I'm just going to demonstrate um, what I mean. I'm just going to duplicate this bay window. Um, and you'll notice that our scaling over here on the right hand side in our channel box and our translations, oh, actually, ignore the translation. We'll notice that the scaling is not 111. Right, so this one, which is at the origin, everything's zero. Um, our y value is above the origin, that's okay. Um, but it's really this one here that I'm primarily concerned with. So to free stuff out, we can just free stuff out with this um, little icon here in our ACA modeling shelf. It looks like a snowflake. And we can freeze those transformations. So I'm going to click that and watch what happens to our scaling transforms here. So everything went back to 111, and then rotation and translation were all zeroed out. Um, and everything zeroed out to this parent object here, this parent piece of geometry, which is the main part of our bay window. Um, and what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to scale objects and move vertices um, with a lot more efficiency. So this one we didn't freeze out. So I'm just going to, by example, just go to vertex mode here. Um, and I'm going to select all these ones on the right hand side of this bay window. And what I want to do is I'm going to rotate it because I want it to not be super rectilinear. I want it to be kind of cartoony. So when I rotate this, you'll notice that all mayhem ensues. Now this one over here, I've zeroed this one out, right? Our scaling, our translations, um, our other transforms are zero. Um, scaling is one. I want to do the same thing here. Oops, let me try that again. I'm going to go to vertex. I'm going to select those same points, and I'm going to rotate. And notice how that object behaves way better. So what's happening here is that when you move and translate vertices or objects that are in a hierarchy relationship, in other words, these objects, these smaller objects, these children are parented to something, um, what happens is the children um, start to move points according to the center of the parent, which is why this is all messed up because nothing was zeroed out. So zeroed out equals good, not zeroed out equals bad. Um, and that's going to make a huge difference later on when we want to go and augment this and make this a more cartoony version of the building. So I'm just going to do some undos here. All right, so get back to normal. That one's zeroed out. We're going to keep that. And then this guy, we're going to delete this guy. So this is going to be our base um, bay window unit. And one of the things actually going back and looking at the reference more carefully, um, I'm going to say that the top of the windowsill sorry, the top of the window bay window has this trim and the bottom has this bottom trim, but the bottom part doesn't have a trim. I know it sounds all weird. Um, <laughs> in other words, this piece up in here, I am going to separate it from the rest of the geo. And rather than repeating this piece, I'm going to end our window, our bay window component like that. That way, when I duplicate this base component, it will match up nicely as I duplicate multiple ones. So rather than having a duplication of that, tr of that top molding um, on the bottom there, um, I'm going to have it so that as I multiply these components, they'll all snap and fit into place properly. Okay, so that's our bay window. It's frozen out. It's got the right amount of detail. I deleted that top box because that's going to come and play when I duplicate this um, over and over again. Okay, so that's our bay window. So let's um let's just hide that guy. I'm going to hit H on the keyboard, hide it. The next thing we're going to want to build is our cornice detail. So I'm going to bring back um, our proxy model, and I'm going to use the original one. I'm going to take that top cornice detail. I'm going to save that guy out. I'm going to zero it out, bring it back to zero. And I'm going to build the detailed version from there. So that's basically the chunk of mass um, that we're going to work with. Um, and I'm also going to freeze this guy out. So, all right, we got the basic form or the basic scale and shape of this cornice detail. And if we look at the reference, um, we've got a couple of different 
um, elements to this cornice detail. We've got the top molding, we've got all this nice carved detail here, and then we have another layer on the bottom. Um, so we're going to start by just breaking this up. So I'm going to call this top big uh, curve piece up here. I call this part number one. Part number two, I'm going to include this section here that has all this intricate work. And then part number three is going to be this bottom here. So let's just start by breaking this up into sections. And we'll take a look at it from three quarter as well. Um, oh, that one cut it off there. Um, all right, let's go and separate those three components. And I'm going to do that by just adding some edge loops. Um, and I might not use this geometry as the final. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this insert myself some edge loops. And the first edge loop I'm going to insert is going to represent this component. So that's the there. The next one is going to be this piece with all that intricate detail. And the last component is those little pieces on the bottom side. OK, so just as a way of marking out those elements. Now, if I'm not super happy, with this division, I can always come in, grab vertices, translate them till I feel a little bit better. And I think what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take a little liberty here because that thing is so high up in the air. We're looking at it from an angle. It's not flat on. So I'm just going to subdivide this rectangular piece into three equal parts in the Y axis, in the vertical axis. Um, and the first section, we're going to come back and we're going to build this part up in here. And we're not even going to build all of this little detail for now. All I just want is some recognition of this major shape in here. So the first part, uh, I think the first thing I'll do is go back to object mode. I'm going to pick that other corner in here. And I'm going to just scale this piece so that it is the right thickness. There we go. So that's piece number one. And I'm going to use this just as a template. So I'm going to move it off to the back here. And the next piece is going to be this section in here. And that section is going to come down on an angle and then come straight back. So I'm going to duplicate this. And to do that, I'm going to add an edge loop. That edge loop I'm going to put somewhere in there. Hit Q to quit out of that tool so I don't add more edges where I don't need them. Then I'm going to grab some of these vertices in here, the bottom ones. And looking at this, this piece comes in and then goes straight down. So it comes in and it goes straight down. So I'm just going to scale those pieces, those vertices in. Now, we have angle straight, angle straight. That looks pretty good. Um, but we also need to do it in the right view. So from this side, these pieces should come in. So I'm going to select just the vertices in the front, not the back ones. OK, because if we look at our photographic reference, um, oops, that one's hard to see. Let me see if I can find a better photo. Bear with me. Let's see. This one's a better angle. Right here. So you can see that it actually comes back on an angle on that side too. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Miocene. So what I'm going to do here is I just want to pick these bottom two rows. Okay, add that one there. I'm going to go into wireframe. So just hit four. That way I can make sure I'm not picking any vertices that I don't want picked. I'll go back to shaded mode, which is number five. I'm going to pull that guy back in. Give us that basic, that basic shape that makes up that cornice. All right. And then the last part is all of these little guys. So let's count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 15 of them. All right. Oops. All right. 
15 of those little guys. So let's start with this. Now looking at this right away, I can probably sense that my proportions are off. If I go back to the front view, we've got one, two, so they kind of step down and then I have these little pieces. I think these are called dentils. These are called dentils too, I think. Uh, maybe these are big dentils and small dentils. <laughs> um, all right, so we gotta make 15 of those little guys. So right now, I think proportion wise, I think the bottom section might be a bit big, but let's not fuss too much over that. So we're gonna have a piece like this. I'm just going to control D and move that down. We'll move this back into position in a second. And then I'm going to scale this one uh, a little bit as well. So it's going to scale like that. And I'll do one more. And I think this one's going to be taller. So that's the bottom section, and a lot narrower. Now, I might have missed one section. Let's go back with the records. One, two, yeah, there's just two of them in there. All right, so let's go into our perspective window. Now, this guy should overhang a little bit. And this one should come back a little bit to match our reference a little bit better. And I don't think these are quite as big. They look almost, from the street level there in the photograph, they look almost square. Okay, that's not bad. So let's parent these all together. But before we do that, let's freeze up some of these objects. So once again, I'll just go through that again, actually. Um, now these are all parented. These two smaller pieces are children of this larger piece, right? And to create that, I'll just do it again. You just select the objects, select the parent as the last selection. It'll be green, hit P, and then they are parented together. And if I just hit the up arrow button, it'll just move up to the top of that hierarchy and show me that that is the whole branch. Okay. Now let's move this sucker into place. And it might actually still be too big, but we can always tweak that. I'm gonna turn the grid off here. Uh, let's see what that looks like from the front view. And the back corner's proxy, I'm gonna hide that for now. Actually, let's turn that back on. So this is a lot shorter than what we estimated. So we can come back and fix all that. And we need 15 of them. So that one's directly in the middle. So on each side of this, I need seven. Um, I'm not gonna eyeball it, see what happens. And I'm gonna use Shift D to eyeball it. So Shift D, I'm gonna move this out. And looking at the reference, they're pretty close together. Okay, that's two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Do I need eight? I need an eight one, don't I? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's one in the middle. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. So they're kind of big. Scale them down just a tiny bit. I think this is a bit small, so let me fix this. Shift B. I think this piece needs to be bigger, so I'm going to scale this piece up something like that. And let's move this face back again. 
And let's move this face up. So this one. Now a lot of the stuff you're not going to see, but sometimes it's just nice to build these things um, a little bit more clean in terms of their geometry. Doesn't really make a difference. I think the only person who's going to know is me and you. Um, but sometimes, sometimes you just do what you got to do. All right. Okay. That piece looks a little bit better. Let's try this again. Shift D. Oh, wait. Let's zero it out. Let's freeze it because we did some scaling. Shift D. All right, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not enough spaces. So, Shift D. So I'm just going to. I could probably do this mathematically. But I don't like math. So I'm, oops. Uh, messed that one up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So let's turn the grid on here. So where did this one end up? Okay, so if we just sneak this one over. It's not going as far. Let's try that. Pretty close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are too many. I have too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. We're going to get this. We're going to get this. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So I got the right amount, but I'm too far out. Oh boy. We're going to get it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Don't give up. Don't give up. might be too big. All right. Let's see here. Let me scale this guy in a little bit. Boom. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Took us long enough, but we got it. Actually, it didn't take us that long. Not a big deal. I'm going to parent these guys. And looks like I didn't scale them. Freeze them out. So I'm going to try to freeze them up there. And I'm going to control D. And I'm just going to move these guys over here. And this last one, I'm just going to delete. I have one too many. All right. Let's go back and look at that photographic detail. All right. So here you'll notice there's this big piece and another line right here. So let's add that. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this one. Actually, let's not duplicate. Let's add an edge loop and extrude. So we're going to go into our mesh tools, insert edge loop. 
I'm going to add that line in there. Go back to my reference. Yeah, I'll stuff open. All right. Hit Q to quit out of that. Go to choose a face. I'll choose that face. So what I want to see is, is this extended on the side? And I think you'll see that it is flush on the side. So I think I'm just going to extrude this front part instead. I'm not going to worry about the side. So we can control E. Oops, I think I hit the wrong button. There we go. And there we go. There is our rough cornice. Now we can get into more detailing up in here. But I think for this kind of cartoon style building we're going to build, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So let's label up some stuff in here. So we got cornice. Okay, and then we got all these little details in here. So let's go about parenting these things. And I'm going to freeze that. And I'm going to save my scene. And now we have a cornice. Let's uh, open up, bring back our bay window. So it's going to select it in the outliner and hit H to unhide it. So now we've got two components here, two major components for that building. Um, let's open up or let's bring back our layer of proxies. And let's just grab this one, the original proxy, and we're going to control D. So we're going to have a duplicate of that. And then we're going to remove it from that layer because when we duplicate it, it'll end up naturally, I think, in the same layer. Yeah. So with it highlighted, go to layers and go remove selected objects from layers. Um, and then we can hide this layer again. Awesome. There we go. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to return this building back to our origin by zeroing out its X. Um, and then the Z, I'm just going to leave the Z where it is. And now I'm going to replace all those proxy elements with these high-res elements. Um, so let's go about and place this building, sorry, not the building, these components. All right, so the first one I'm going to replace is on this side. And I'm just going to try and line these up. And then I'm going to use Shift-D. Shift-D, that's going to duplicate, but it's going to, it's going to remember these transforms. And it's going to duplicate the next object, keeping those transforms in mind, and displace it. And I'm going to add one more because the top detail, if I go back to the original, the top detail has this box part to the top. Okay. Um, and then it has this weird roof thing. So I'm going to add one more bay window than I actually need. But then I'm going to steal that detail from that last duplicated object. And that detail I want, let's see if, how well our height works out, is this box here. So I'm going to select this box. I'm going to hold Shift and P, and that's going to unparent. And watch what happens in my outliner over here when I Shift P. The base popped out of that hierarchy, which is out of hierarchy. I'm going to delete that. We don't need that. All right. So that extra base is um, this detail up here. But I also don't need all this trim in here. So I might delete this trim too. Okay. But that base, you can see that base is actually taller up there. It's kind of weird. So I might have to extend and pull that piece. But before I do that, let's uh, let's see how we fared in terms of height. So this is the height of our, ooh, that's pretty good. We came in pretty close to our turn off the grid, to our original proxy. Not bad. OK. Something to be said about the proxy. Now we need to move all of these in. Um, and I could probably just go and delete these for now. I want to keep, actually, I want to keep this part. So let's see. And it's that one there. And delete all that stuff. I'm going to leave that piece because we still need that piece. Now I have all these windows. Um, 
and I want to move them together. So I can parent, I can use this one and be the parent of all of these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called a locator. And locators are great because they sometimes help you with just managing hierarchies and objects, but they are not actual geometry. Um, so I'm just going to create a locator. And the locator just looks like um, there. Just this little green object, like an axis. So it has no geometrical component to it. It's really a placeholder for when you want to create a group of objects and link them together to something. So I'm going to scale our locator up a little bit, just so it's easier to see. And I'm going to move our locator so that it's located um, whoops, by this object here. And I'm going to put it right at the base of our object. That's not bad. OK, so now I'm going to parent all of these higher resolution bay windows that we just made. Whoops. I'm going to parent all these to that locator. So I'm just going to go through, select them all, as well as this top detail. Then I'm going to go in and select this locator. And then I'm going to hit P, and that's going to parent them all together. You'll notice inside my outliner, I have all those bay windows parented to this locator. Now I can move these wherever I need to. And they should be roughly about there. Pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to grab that stack, and I am going to duplicate it. And I'm going to move it over to this side. And then I'm going to also choose these bay windows here. And I'm going to delete all those. I'm going to keep the top as I did on the other side. They have those little roof components. Now our building is starting to shape up. I'm going to grab our cornice detail. And I'm also going to place it where it needs to be. So I'm looking at the top view here. A lot of times I'll just go from ortho to perspective window. Um, because sometimes it's easier to move things in an orthographic view than in a perspective window view. Now this thing didn't quite turn out the right scale and size as the original box that I left. Um, I can um, come back and fix that, um, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now. I think I think I might overestimate it to begin with, anyways. And then I'm going to use this for the bottom section in here. And I'm going to replace this one too. I'm going to go and delete this. Now, that's not the detail on the bottom of the building. The detail on the bottom of the building is actually quite different. And there's not enough information in the photographs that I took. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google Maps. So this is what's pretty awesome about using real reference, somewhere that you actually know, um, as opposed to just some random image on the internet and you didn't know where you got it from. Because what I can do now is I can go back and revisit this thing um, without leaving the comfort of my chair. Um, so a bit lazy ass. Um, <laughs> I actually did go walk by this building this morning just to have a better look at it. So this building is actually, I called it the Hastings building because I thought it was on East Hastings, but it's not. It's actually on Pender. Um, and it's Pender and, Pender and Abbott, I think. So let's grab little... Google man. Now let's drop them on Pender Street. And there it is right there. So on closer inspection in Google, I'm just going to zoom in. You can see that if you look right in here, um, it's actually it's different than the detail at the top of the roof. But it also is almost like a little porticle. There's a little slant here. There's a little bit of a roof, sloping roof line, right? So at one point, this building on the bottom floor um, looked quite different. Um, and this is some sort of modern retrofit. So we're going to try and go back and build some of this detail. And we're going to we're going to use the detail that we have in that original cornice that we made. Um, we're just going to modify it. OK. So oops. Let's pull it out from that object. So when I look at this, I want to keep these 
pieces here. Probably the same amount as you've seen on the roof. Uh, but the big part is this top piece I probably don't need. So I'm going to open up in my outliner all the components for this. And I'm going to shift P to break up that hierarchy. And I think this piece in here is the piece I don't need. So I'm going to delete that. Move this piece back down. And I think these pieces might need to be bigger, actually. I wonder how they look up there. Yeah, let's make these pieces maybe not bigger, but let's make them stick out more. So I'm just going to scale these guys in Z to make them a little bit longer. And then this piece, I'm going to scale in in Z to make it a little shorter. Okay, now what I want, if I go back in here, I've got this top and then it slants up in there. So I think what I can do is grab these vertices, lower them so they're about the right height. And I've got that extra line up in there. So now I need a sloping part. So I think what I'm going to do here, let's see. Now I could move this edge to give me the slope. That's not bad, actually. It's a really gentle slope. You almost don't even notice it. And I could, if I want that slope to slope better, I could get rid of this little ledge in here by picking that until that edge gives me a nice smooth slope all the way down. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so let's go back into object mode. Oh, the UV, the dreaded UV. Okay, now we're back in object mode. And then we can parent all this stuff back together again. And let's make sure we freeze it. And then we're going to move it back into place. That's not bad. Not bad at all. And there you have it. Not totally finished, but we're getting there. We went from these proxy buildings to now we've got a pretty nice detailed model of that front facade. And all we did was we built the cornice, we built a bay window, we took that cornice and we duplicated it to make this little mini portico at the base of the building, right? We still got some details to add in the bottom here, but um, we're getting pretty close to finishing out what we need in this phase in Maya. Um, so let's go in and let's have some more fun and let's build out these storefronts. Now, the cool thing about when you're making this kind of stuff and you're working from real reference is as a designer, I think you're always kind of stuck for, well, what should I do here? And what should I do there? And a lot of times these details, I don't know, sometimes you can't really dream up these details. Um, things like how this got retrofitted, how this wall, this blue wall here um, has, has been added in over the years. These doors are different now. Um, the way it sets in from the street level, um, these hydro or fire hydrants on the side of the building. So if there's ever a fire, you've got access to fire to water. Um, I don't know, there's a bunch of stuff in here. And even if you look at the side of the building, all of this graffiti, right? All of this kind of stuff where um, the city's not perfectly flat, right? It's got all this extraneous detail. And I think that really adds up um, in the end. But actually, we've got this detail here between each floor as well, which looks like it's some sort of wood trim piece. Um, the other thing you'll notice if you look at this, you'll see here we've got bricks on the front face and then on the side face of this building, it's just kind of um, concrete that's been finished, right? So there's a little bit of brick down in here, but I think over the years, some different materials have been used, right? Uh, but definitely the front facing facade of this building um, is the prettier facade. If you go to the back, actually, and this is what's great about Google, um, we can drive around 
and we can go look at the back alley. Um, let's go in here. So we're in the park lot beside that building, right? You can see that there used to be a building here that butted up against this building. And the remnants of that building, you can see kind of still are kind of stuck to this building here. And if we go down the alleyway, we can see the back of the facade is not half as pretty. You don't have bay windows, you have very standard windows. Um, you have some concrete block, which I think is probably a new addition. Because this building, um, I did some research, this building was built in 1912. And I don't think they used these kind of concrete blocks back then. So this definitely looks like some sort of um, addition to the original building. You don't see that concrete block anywhere else. Um, so my guess is this was probably open at some point um, and had some service entries or whatever. And then they kind of bricked it in at some point. Let's go back to the front here. And if you look at the front of this building, if you look from this side too, you'll notice, oops, I think I went too far. Oh, maybe it won't be, let's see. There we go. Oh, maybe I can't see it from there. You'll notice the side here is cut back. Um, and what, the reason why they did that is if this building went all the way back and because this is the property line. And then this building, if they built up to the property line, a lot of those um, rooms in the middle would not have light. So what they did was they cut that back and they added windows. You can see those windows behind those trees. Um, so there'd be light inside all of the rooms in this building. Uh, pretty smart move there from, by the architect. Um, we can add that in. Let's go add that in. We might not add the windows, but let's add that shape in. So let's go add an edge loop. And what we're going to do is add one in here. Um, and I don't know how far that goes back. I'm going to assume it goes back all the way to the back that way. Now, another place that we can check, actually, is we can look at Google Maps. And we can go to Satellite View. So where is that? That building is right here. So if we go to satellite view, sometimes you can kind of extrapolate from the sky, the satellite shot, what those buildings look like. So here is the parking lot. Here is our building, right? Um, and you can notice here, it comes back, cuts back, and it goes all the way back in a straight line. There seems to be another cut in the building here. We're just going to ignore that. So we're going to add that whole cut in there. Now, I don't know how much it's going to affect our design, so to speak. Um, whoops, we're still in add edge loop mode. So we can go in here and we can delete all these faces. And what we're going to want to do is build those faces back. There's a couple ways we can do it. Um, easiest way is just to put in some more cubes. So I'm just selecting faces. Actually, I'll hold shift and select these all together. Delete, delete. All right. So now we want to close that off. Now, there are fancy tools that will allow us to close that off and then make it all one continuous piece of geometry. Um, I'm not going to concern myself about that. We just want what we want and what we need. <laughs> this is not a production model. So for us as designers, we just really want to be able to put stuff together to visualize our ideas. All right, object mode, vertex. And the way I'm going to do it, oh god. <laughs> Got those points. Yes, there we go. Let's move them back. And I'm going to grab these front points. Move them back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these faces and I'm going to delete these faces. Now you'll notice in preview those pieces are black because we're looking at the inside of that box. 
we can come into here in their mesh display and use reverse. And what it does is just kind of inside out at that box. Can move this into place. All right, and then I can just parent that piece to that geo. Now we got that nice little cut in there. Let's see. I think we need to place it a little bit better. And I'm going to take the center point and center my pivot. That's a little better. And if you want to be super precise over here, you can see that point's not quite notched up. And just move it back. Now, modelers all across the globe right now are probably rolling in their grave because they're like, you should just fill that hole properly with the fill hole function. Um, whatever, man, get over it. Okay, there we have it. We have our white well cut back in there. And then what do we want to do? We want to finish out this storefront. So let's add in that little wall that they added um, to divide those spaces in the front entrance way. And I think what they were doing is um, originally this building was a hotel and a restaurant. Um, over the years, its uses have gotten changed. Um, but for the most part, it still remains a hotel. Now it's a printing shop on the bottom. And that wall in there was strictly to delineate those two entranceways. So if you're a customer going to the coffee shop, you're on this side of the blue wall. And if you actually live in one of the apartment buildings up top, or sorry, in one of the hotel rooms up top, um, you enter on this side. So let's go back to our street view or one of our photographs. And let's just look at where this blue wall is placed. So, and it looks like this wall is actually on an angle as well. So if I extend this blue wall up, it is probably in line with the front facing bay window. All right, so let's go to our front view. And to switch from view to view, all I'm doing is hitting space bar with the cursor over top of the view. I want to either expand or shrink down. So that's pretty close. It looked like it was in line with that. So let's move it over a bit more. So we're into the point where we're, we're really eyeballing things at this stage. OK, so now let's build some doors. All right, we're going to go get a primitive cube again. Let's scale that cube up. And from a door width point of view, it's going to be a little bit narrow. It's going to be narrowing, narrower than those bay windows, I think. Let's go back and look at the reference. Oh, yeah. I wonder if my photographs might show us a little bit more because there's no, there's no, uh, trees in my photograph, or at least they don't have leaves. Okay. And the door's height is actually quite a bit lower than that print print sign. So I want to say that's the height of a door. And I'm going to move this wall over a little bit because I think I'm actually I'm a little cramped here. And then I've got another door on this side. There's definitely a ton of windows in here that I don't seem to have room for. So I think my building might be a little bit narrower than it should be. All right, so let's make these doors proper size. And we're going to use the extrude tool again. Control E. We're going to use the offset. Just 
build a basic door frame. And I'm going to control E again to translate that back. So we have our basic door. And that UV haunts me, that UV tab. All right, there we go. And most doors and buildings, they're a little bit raised off the street level. Um, you'll notice that when you enter a building, there's usually some sort of threshold. Um, so it's going to lift that door off the ground plane a little bit. All right, then. And we don't need this one. We're going to duplicate this guy. Let's freeze it out first. We're going to duplicate that. And then, whoops. Move it over on this side. You know what I think happened is I think these, this opening probably could be narrower. So I think what I'm going to do is let's move this sign out of the way. And let's go to vertex mode for the front view here. And I'm just going to grab. Let's see, I'm going to unselect some of these objects here first. This object and this object. I'm going to unparent it because I want to be able to select. Here we go. This is better. Just these line of vertices. And I'm going to move it over because I think it's too thick. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a bit of a wider opening to work with for my doors and our windows. Let's move that a little bit more. So that looks like in perspective. Okay, that's pretty good. Buys me a little bit more room for these doorways. And then the window that I ultimately need to add as well. So I'm going to add a window above this door. Let's go into wireframe mode so I can see that oops geometry. Let's try that again. And then I'm also use this same geo to make this window. What does this window look like? Now we can cut holes for the windows like we did up top with the bay windows. Um, I might pass on some of that detail for now. Let's put the sign back in place. Let's make the sign a little bit bigger so it matches that opening. And I'm going to extrude this guy so we can make a little bit of a frame for our store sign. And I'm going to extrude again. Whoops. Extrude again. There we go. Can offset that back in. Now our building's pretty rocking. I think we're done. So let's freeze this building out. Zero that out. Let's that's zeroed out. These are zeroed out in terms of scale. All right, so let's parent all this stuff together. And I call that door. I'm going to label this one door as well. And we have that window. I'll call this one store window. 
Remember, use underscore in your name. And then I'm going to parent all this stuff together. And that's our store sign. So for the bottom, let's put, let's make this little mini portico, the parent of all this stuff on the bottom. All right then, in our main building, and then we've got all these bay windows. And I'm going to make actually, where is this? All right, so I'm just going to select that, parent it together. So that is that row there. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just working with the low, with the outliner um, to see where these pieces are. And I'm holding the control key so I can select things. Um, and then I'm just going to hit shift. I'm going to hit P to parent those. So that is one row of bay windows, the other row of bay windows. Here's my cornice. Here's my little portico. Let's rename this portico. Mini portico. Um, let's parent all of this stuff to our building's body. P and then let's save. There you have it. There is our building. Basic shape. We've got the front facade. We got all our detail there, right? Go back and look at our reference. It's not exactly it. Oh, we forgot those details. Shall we add those? Let's add those. So let's grab cube. Let's scale this up. It's going to be roughly the width of the building, but obviously not that tall. Something like this. And I believe they are. Where are they placed? Let's look at that. They kind of go between the top portion of the window detail. So they're kind of in between the floors, so to speak. So they're somewhere in there. Ooh. All right, let's scale that down. Okay, what do those details look like? They look like they have little insets in them. Okay. I'm trying to decide if I want to add those or not. Let's not worry about those. Let's use our Shift D. Actually, oops, let's delete that. Let's freeze this out first. Let's use our Shift D to locate the second one. Then we'll just keep shifting D until we got enough. I have a few too many here. <laughs> got a little carried away. And some of those things you might not notice now, but I think when we go do some basic renders, which we'll use as base layers for our um, drawings, you'll find that all this extra details is going to give you a little bit more to work with. I'm wondering if we should add this detail in here. Let's add that. Let's add that into the sides. That'll be easy. So let's take these. Let's parent them all together. And let's call this a another trim detail. We'll just call this trim for the floors. And we're going to parent that to 
our main building. And the last thing we're going to do is add in these little, what I would call pilaster details to the sides here. And they need to reach all the way up to there. Okay. So, yes. Let's grab a cube to do that. Let's just scale that guy up. And let's move him into place. So we'll deal with the first one here. We'll get the width correct. Scale up and Y. Sometimes the scaling tool is not super accurate, so I might scale it to get to the right place because it's pretty finicky. And then I might just move the vertices. All right, and let's go back to object mode. So I'm just hitting F to frame stuff. So if I'm in my scene and I'm trying to get to a certain object, F will frame it immediately for me. It's going to add that detail onto the side of this building here. Okay, and if I look at this thing, it's got a base and it's got like this inset box in here. So let's add an edge loop. So let's freeze this guy out. And then let's go add an edge loop. to quit out of that tool. I'm going to grab that face and I'm going to control E and then my offset. I'm just going to offset it slightly. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to control E once again. I don't know if that happened. Oh, it did. Perfect. And now I've got that little polyester detail. And it looks like there's a shadow line here. I'm going to guess that that is floating off of the piece below it. So. I think this piece needs to go back. Mm, let's see how to do that. I think the easier way to do it is to pick these. And extrude them forward. Now, I can't just move them because if I move them, that's going to happen down there. That's not good. So I'm going to select them. Control E. Oh, sorry. Control E. And I should just be able to lift them off. But there we go. Now I got a bit of an overhang to that. And I'm going to go back to object mode. Let's call this our pilaster. Pilasters are just kind of, they, they're not, I don't think these ones definitely aren't structural. Um, but they look like columns that are stuck to walls is the best way I would describe what a, pal a pilaster is. Okay, so let's duplicate that. And let's just move it on to the other side of the building. And go to the front view to line that up nicely. Not bad. I think it looks pretty good. And then let's parent these to our bottom section of the building. And now let's save this guy out. There you have it. One, what I would call a medium res building. Now, if you're building stuff for a production and you're making this it's kind of semi photorealistic, um, You'd probably go in and you would probably do a lot more modeling. This is still what I would consider a proxy model. I think our original proxy here is a very basic geometric proxy, which has a lot of use. You can use that to draw over top of. This one's got a little bit more detail. Um, it's a little bit more fleshed out. Um, but this would be typically something that I would send to a previous team to previous shots to block in um, basic compositions. This is not a high res model by any degree. Um, on a production, especially a feature production, all of this stuff that you're seeing in here, um, a modeler would go in and they would be chamfering all these edges and putting a lot more detail into it. And those are the things that you don't really notice, um, but if they're not there, you kind of feel them. Um, so they're not things that are going to stand out to you, but once the lighting and the surfacing and all that stuff comes together, you would notice that.
for us, we're not going to go there. This is not a modeling tutorial. This is a design tutorial. So now we have a base building. Um, let's uh, let's control D this now. And then now let's start doing some augmentation to this. This is where the fun begins because it can go horribly right or horribly wrong. Um, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, in the last video I showed you, we use what's called a lattice. So we can do that again. Up in here in modeling, I'm just going to go to animation. And in the uh, deform tools, there's a tool called lattice. Now, if I click on the box, it's going to give me the options. Um, and it's going to give me a certain number of divisions in X, Y, and Z. I'm just going to go by default. And I'm going to say apply. And you'll see that it's created this new thing in the outliner called a lattice. right? And it's kind of like this bounding box. So we, we, we dealt a little bit with it um, on the last video. And then the last video, we used it to kind of augment or transform our our uh, our very basic proxy models. Let's see how well we fare now that we have a detailed model. Now, some people go nuts with the lattice. Um, I like to keep it simple. I don't think you need to deform your labs a whole lot to get your building away from something that's perfect computery um, and into something that's a little bit more cartoon language. Uh, everyone's got their own approach to stuff. And I think when you're working as an art department, your job is to kind of, especially if you're working on a cartoony production per se, your job is to kind of figure out what that style is going to be, right? What's going to give us um, the kind of cartoony illustrative le le style that we're looking for and honestly there's no way to really know what that is except to iterate to try stuff out um, present it to your director and in my experience the best way to figure out what it's supposed to be is to make shit that's wrong uh, for lack of a better description so let's try another lattice uh, let's see, let's do something different this time. Let's make this one squat. So I'm going to pick the lattice points. Oops, I got some geo here. Try not to pick the geo because I think it's going to make your life more difficult. <laughs> All right, I'm going to scale this one. I'm going to scale mostly in Y. And I don't know. Keep our storefront height the same, but I'm going to make the buildings, the apartment buildings, a little bit more squat. Uh, I'll rotate this this way. Maybe I'll rotate this one similarly. And I'm going to go into the right side view and affect the right side view too. So let's, let's see what happens if we give this building a little bit of a slant that way. I'm going to hide this lattice too. And if you look at some of the shows like Cloud of the Chance of Meatballs or Pixar's Up or whatnot, a lot of times it's just some really simple choices that they've made to create that kind of cartoony style. Um, sometimes they'll exaggerate things like cornice details and they'll make them super big. So let's try a version where we do something like that. So I'm going to grab this, right? And maybe I want this to be a lot taller or maybe a lot deeper than what you might find in the real world. I'm just playing at this point. And this is what's kind of cool about once you get all this stuff done in 3D, you can go and muck about, so to speak, um, and experiment with your new kind of language, per se. So in this one, let's, let's isolate this mini portico. I'm going to cut out of our hierarchy. Sometimes when things are all joined together and you just want to affect the parent mostly, um, 
sometimes you got to unparent stuff before you go and mess with that parent. Okay, so that is the Okay, I'm going to try some stuff with this. That's pretty subtle, but I like that. All right. And what we can do too is we can make a shorter version of this building. I'm going to grab these points here. I'm just going to move them down to make this building a lot shorter. Now I'm going to lattice this sucker. And then I'm going to pick its lattice points and have some fun with its overall shape. I actually want to pick both of these rows. There we go. And I'm going to make this building wider as well. I'll leave that back for this one. I'm just going back to object mode. And I'm going to hide this lattice. All right, so there we have it. We've got our original, and then we've got three different kind of whoops. <laughs> now, when something is in a lattice, um, you're going to want to freeze the lattice or move the lattice with it, um, or else you get this. Oh, craziness. So what's happening is this object is moving through. Where's the lattice for this one? This lattice. So when it moves through that lattice, it kind of changes and transforms its shapes. Um, so if you want to move that building together, one or two options. Um, oops, that didn't work. I think you can, best thing to do is just uh, control D <laughs> and then what you want to do let's see if I move that now yeah once I've control D it then that's no longer related to the lattice um, and I can move that anywhere I want so maybe the best solution as we lattice our buildings is to control D and then that way we can move them anywhere we want um, So you have it, a bunch of cartoony versions of our building. Next time around, we're going to get into some basic rendering. Um, nothing too fancy, but again, we can find, we'll move on to the next step. Um, and then we're going to take this into some sort of drawing program, see what we can add to it from a 2D point of view. 
to help extend these different uh, designs and create more iterations uh, for our directors, our supervisors to look at um, and sort of get some sort of approval. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good luck. Model fast, model fun. Uh, don't be afraid. You're not going to break anything. And we'll see you next time. Ciao.